I'm looking at the strange characters in the Bible. And the next one is going to be King Og. Og, king of Bashan. And you don't hear much about this guy, but he's actually mentioned at least 22 times in the Bible that I could see. And in at least seven Old Testament books of the Bible. That's quite a bit. For you to never really hear much about this guy, he's mentioned quite a bit. And it was a very significant victory that Moses and Israel had over this guy. In Numbers 21, 33, it says, And they turned and went up by the way of Bashan, and Og, the king of Bashan, went out against them, he and all his people, to the battle at Edrei. And the Lord said unto Moses, Fear him not, for I have delivered him into thy hand and all his people and his land. And thou shalt do to him as thou didst unto Sahan, king of the Amorites, which, which dwelt at Heshbon. So they smote him and his sons and all his people, until there was none left him alive, and they possessed his land. So the first thing you see is that they went out against Moses and Israel. You see that? And Og, the king of Bashan, went out against them. You're always going to have something or someone coming out against you, especially if, especially if you're living for God. You know, like Paul said, all that live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. You're always going to have somebody coming out against you, no matter where you're at, at work, at school, church, somebody's coming out against you. God will allow enemies to be raised up against you. Just like we talked about in that other strange character. Back there in 1 Chronicles 20 and verse 6 where it says, And yet again there was war. You see, it's over and over and over. And yet again, you wake up tomorrow, you say, Not this again. And yet again, there was war. You see, over and over, you're going to face it. That's why Paul said, I die daily. It's a daily battle. So Og went out against them. But look what the Lord says. And the Lord said unto Moses, Fear him not. Now, that may not seem like <clears throat> very significant to you right now. But let me show you something about this Og character. Look at Amos 2 and verse 9. It says in Amos 2, 9, Yet I destroyed the Amorite before them, whose height was like the height of the cedars, and he was strong as the oaks. Yet I destroyed his fruit from above and his roots from beneath. You see, that Og had the height of the cedars. He was strong as the oaks, but when Moses was going to go against him, the Lord said, fear him not. He said, fear him not. That's an amazing thing. And it's just like, you know, the Lord talks about, he says, fear not them which kill the body, but after that have nothing they can do, but rather fear him who's able to cast both soul and body in hell. You see, there's no need in fearing man who can just kill your body. That's all I could do. All he could do would be to kill their body. He couldn't destroy both soul and body in hell. And see, the more you fear man, the less you'll fear God. And the more you fear God, the less you'll fear men. So Og, king of Bashan, went out against him, he and all his people, to the battle at Edrei. And the Lord said unto Moses, Fear him not, for I have delivered him into thy hand. So all, all Moses had to do was trust God and take him at his word. that He was going to deliver this monster and his people into his hand. But look at another instance of this story. Deuteronomy 3 and verse 1. Then we turned and went up the way to Bashan. And Og, 
the king of Bashan, came out against us, he and all his people, to battle at Edrei. And the Lord said unto me, Fear him not, for I will deliver him and all his people and his land into thy hand. And thou shalt do unto him as thou didst unto Sihon, king of the Amorites, which dwelt at Heshbon. So all his people. It wasn't just Og, king of Bashan. It wasn't just this one monster of a man. It was all his people too. Sometimes it's going to feel like you're outnumbered. And it's going to feel like everybody is on the opposite side. But it's you and the Lord on this side. And that's all you need. So all his people and Og came out against them. And look what it says in verse 2. This really pops out at me. It says, And thou shalt do unto him as thou didst unto Sahan, king of the Amorites, which dwelt at Heshbon. You see that? Just like God overcame your previous giants, he can overcome your future giants. You know, you remember that giant you faced and you thought, well, I'll never make it against him. But you did. And you're, you're here listening to me talk right now. You lived through it. And that, Ogs, or that giant is nowhere near you, near you anymore. You see, God can remove people or places or events from your life that were mountains you had to conquer or giants you had to conquer. He can remove those things from your life. And you don't want to forget those things. It's good to write them down. God gave me victory over this. God gave me victory over that. That way you can look back and the Lord can say, Thou shalt do unto him as thou didst unto that giant or that event in your life. And that's what he's saying here to Moses. And thou shalt do unto him as thou didst unto Sahan, king of the Amorites, which dwelt at Heshbon. So the Lord our God delivered into our hands Og also, the king of Bashan. He did just like he said he would. The Lord delivered Og into Moses and Israel's hands. And it says, And we smote him until none was left to him remaining. So, you see that? Until none was left remaining. He got rid of everything. He got rid of all the problem. You know why? So that it wouldn't pop its head back up again. And it says, And we took all the cities at that time. There was not a city which we took not from them. Three score cities. All the region of Argob, the kingdom of Og and Bashan. All these cities were fenced with high walls, gates, and bars. Beside unwalled towns, a great many. And we utterly destroyed them as we did unto Sahan, king of Heshbon, utterly destroying the men, women, and children of every city. And you're going to come across this, you know, atheists, Bible haters, Bible skeptics, they're going to say, why would God have them kill the women and the children? Well, they had to get rid of everything and everybody. Because, imagine if he left the women and the children, and just killed, you know, Og and the men. But what's going to happen? Those women are just going to produce more children, and those children are going to grow up and be just like Og, king of Bashan. And then you're just back with the same problem. So you had to get rid of all of it, even the little problems. And it's, you know, the way that people think is, well, he's killing innocent children. But God can see into the future, those children are going to grow up and they're going to be the enemies to God's people, just like their fathers were. So that's why that had to happen. And people see that as unmerciful, but it's actually the merciful thing to do. So God was showing mercy to everybody, 
by allowing that to happen or wanting that to happen. And that pictures how you have to get rid of the little things in your life that don't seem as bad. Or that problem is just going to pop its head back up again. You know, you got big sins, what you would refer to as big sins in your life. And you know you're supposed to eliminate those. But then you got these, what people would refer to as little sins. And you say, well, I can let that by. But the little sins are just going to turn into big problems down the road. So it's best to just get rid of the little things as well. The ones that don't seem as much of a threat will become a threat if you allow it. So that's why they got rid of the women and children of every sea. But all the cattle and the spoil of the cities we took for a prey to ourselves. And we took at that time out of the hand of the two kings of the Amorites. The land that was on this side Jordan. From the river of Arnon and to Mount Hermon. Which Hermon the Sidonians call Sirion. And the Amorites call it Shiner. And the cities of the plain. And all Gilead and all Bashan. Unto Salca and Edria. Cities of the kingdom of Og and Bashan. For only Og, king of Bashan, remained of the remnant of giants. Now look at this. Behold, his bedstead was a bedstead of iron. And you'll find that iron in the scriptures is mostly associated with evil stuff and is negative and associated with the Antichrist and everything else. Is it not in Rabbath of the children of Ammon? It says, nine cubits was the length thereof, and four cubits the breadth of it, after the cubit of a man. So you see how big this guy is. Nine cubits. His bed was nine cubits in length. And if a cubit is 18 inches, that adds up to about 13 and a half feet. So, he's got a really big bed. And four cubits... The breadth of it. So about six feet wide. That's a big bed. So I uh, I'm you know, they you know they got the same king size bed. Well Og is a king. I, I don't know if that's where they got this the king size bed phrase from, but this is definitely a king size bed. And either he's really big or he just hates his wife and he's got her on one end of that big king size bed and he's on the other end. Or maybe he couldn't get his kids to go to sleep at night. They were too afraid to sleep in the room. And he had about six kids in there in that bed with him at night. Or he's just a really big dude and he's taken up that whole bed. You know, I remember seeing Shaquille O'Neal give a tour of his house once. And he had a really large bed. But he's nothing compared to Og, King of Bashan. And they say that he was about 13 foot tall, which is almost double Shaq's size. And that's the enemy that the Lord said, fear him not. You see, it doesn't do you any good to fear man. No matter how big he is, it just doesn't do you any good. And you know, there's a lot of fear mongering that goes on. People want you to be afraid. There's always something around the corner that people want you to be afraid of. And it's easy to be afraid. And it's more easier said than done not to be afraid. But God says, fear him not. And I like what Peter says. You know, he says over there in his epistle in 1 Peter 3.14, But, and if ye suffer for righteousness' sake, happy are ye. And be not afraid of their terror. Neither be troubled. God doesn't want you to be afraid of these men. They're evil men. And evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. We are already know that if you live godly in Christ, you'll suffer persecution. We already know it's coming. It's a given. If you ain't haven't already suffered persecution for Christ's sake, you're probably about to. But there's no need to be afraid because 
The Lord hasn't given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind, 2 Timothy 1, 7. And no matter how big the giant is, everything is under God's feet. Did you know the Bible says that? Everything is under God's feet. He's put all things under his feet. There's really no need to be afraid. Sometimes the enemy has a lot of people. Sometimes the enemy is really big. But you know what else is significant about King Og and his bedstead of iron? King Og and his bedstead of iron proves that Og, king of Bashan, went to sleep. Your enemy goes to sleep. There's times where he's tired. There's times where he's hungry. There's times where he's weak. But you know what the Bible says about the Lord in Psalm 121 and verse 4. It says, Behold, he that keepeth Israel shall neither, shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord God Almighty does not go to sleep. Your worst enemy on this planet goes to sleep. He gets hungry. He gets tired. He gets sleepy. He fears. But the Lord doesn't do any of those things. And he lives in you. Look at Psalm 136. In Psalm 136, starting in verse 16, it's said, talking about the Lord, giving praise to the Lord here. It says, To him which led his people through the wilderness, for his mercy endureth forever. That's God leading Israel through the wilderness. To him which smote great kings, for his mercy endureth forever. You see, you got these great kings, but they're nothing compared to the king of kings. It says, and slew famous kings, for his mercy endureth forever. You think about that word famous, and you got all these famous people, and everybody would love to meet these famous people, even the president, rulers of this world. But the Lord God lives in you. You have 24-7 access to be able to talk to him. And he's the most famous king of all, the king of kings. Everybody knows who God is. They may not know God like you know him, but when they look up at the stars, they know somebody made that deep down. He's the most famous king there is. And it says, Sahan, king of the Amorites, for his mercy endureth forever. The Lord destroyed him. And then look whose name appears again. And Og, the king of Bashan, for his mercy endureth forever. See, it wasn't Moses and Israel that destroyed Og. It was the Lord God himself. You see, these are notable victories. And the, the Lord has these victories wrote down again so that you don't forget. Just like every victory that you have, you need to write it down in your Bible so that you don't forget. Or write it down in a journal. And when you got another giant rising up, you can look back and say, and the Lord can say to you, Thou shalt destroy him as thou destroyed Og, king of Bashan. You see? And it says, And gave their land for an heritage, for his mercy endureth, endureth forever. Even an heritage unto Israel, his servant, for his mercy endureth forever. Now look at this. Who remembered us in our lowest state, for his mercy endureth forever. And that's the way you want to stay. You want to stay in a lowest state. You want to stay coming to God very lowly and humble, knowing that your enemy could rip you up to pieces. You see, God's not impressed with people that are high and mighty. God is not impressed with Og. He is way ahead of Og. To him, Og is a little ant. You know how in Proverbs it says, go to the ant? Well, go out there and look at the ants. And you'll see that that biggest ant on that ant hill that every ant look up, looks up to 
you could go up to that biggest ant that every ant looks up to, that thinks he's high and mighty, the giant that thinks he's Og, king of Bashan. You could take your foot and squash him and not even think about it. And that's infinitely times worse when God takes his foot and stomps the biggest king, the biggest giant on the planet. He's even more far advanced over Og, king of Bashan, infinitely times more than you are the biggest ant on the ant hill. It's no contest. Uh, so the best thing you can do is realize you are nothing. But God is everything, and he's more likely to remember you in your lowest state. Remember that all it would take for you to be hugging a toilet tonight is a small little stomach bug. All it would take for you to be in serious pain is a small little kidney stone. All it would take for you to be very sick or even die is a small little spider to bite you. You know, he's going to remember you in your lowest state. And it says, and hath redeemed us from our enemies for his mercy endureth forever. If you're going to have any help against your enemies, it's going to be the Lord. Who giveth food to all flesh for his mercy endureth forever. The only reason you got food in your house is because of the Lord. So it says, O oh, give thanks unto the, unto the God of heaven, for his mercy endureth forever. Thank God for your giants that have been defeated in your life, and then the og in your life right now, that's at work, that's at school, that's in church, wherever he may be. You think back, and God delivered you from Sihon, king of the Amorites. He delivered you from the, that Goliath, he delivered you from that giant with six fingers and six toes. He delivered you from that Egyptian of great stature. So he can deliver you from Og, king of Bashan. He can do it again just like he did before.